Hi, this is Gloria, your life coach. Welcome to another episode of Life's a Shuffle. Hi, this is Ron Johnson, life coach, mentor coach, and welcome to another episode of Life's a Shuffle. I think we're about a, a day late, never a dollar short. Welcome <laughs> to another freestyle Thursday, as we will call it. But, you know, with Thanksgiving happening yesterday, everybody, including myself and Father Gloria, needed some time off, needed some time for themselves. Uh, I've been seeing a lot of posts on social media about self-care, gratitude. Um, yeah, a lot of things have happened this this year. And, you know, it's, it's really great to take a moment to sit back and think. Um, I did something that I never done yesterday is I, I, I sat, I saw I was reading Jay Shetty's book, Think Like a Bunk. And uh, as one chapter, he says, most people can't sit for 15 minutes, not do anything. And most of us are what, sitting down, we're looking at our phone, we're sitting down, we're reading, we're just doing, 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 right? So I sat down and I usually read between 4.30 and 5.30 a.m. And I sat down at 5.23 a.m. I said, let me sit for seven minutes by myself without looking at my phone and I close my eyes. The first two minutes, like, oh, man, I got to do something. Open my eyes again. I said, hold on. By the time I hit 5.26 a.m., I was like, God, this feels pretty good. I was thinking, I was meditating on my gratitude and being thankful for everything that's happened to me this year. And, you know, it, it didn't dawn on me. Something kind of hit my brain right then and there. Um, you know, when we look at the word depression, we talked about this with uh, James Lamkin. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, and I was reading Jay Shetty's book about values, and it, it kind of hit kind of all cylinders, all my pillars at the same time. And I was thinking to myself, have I been experiencing uh, some level of depression? Depression is not just one level, okay? You can go from zero to 100. We know that. And I, I said, maybe I have been. Um, I've been noticing here after moving to Washington is, you know, this whole transition period. And from training to coaching and all that stuff, um, you know, we transition. It's not right away instant, you know, my, my value, I have a huge value when it comes to money because since I was five years old, my dad would take me to his business out of work. So you're talking about spring break, summer vacations, winter vacation, I'm working to make money, right? And the purpose of working to make money was so I could buy what I wanted. And, you know, that became my value. You got to, you know, my dad's value was, what to be successful, you got to work. Or to be somebody, you got to work. So the idea has been ingrained in me since I was five years old, work, 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 work. And now I have to take a step back because as I'm transitioning, not just transitioning, but growing a brand new business, what's not happening? Money's not coming in. While with training, I was established for like five years. It's still established now because I still do virtual sessions. No money's coming. The money was coming in very easily. Now you got to work a little harder to get money coming in because you're starting fresh. And I'm starting noticing my body, my mind getting really, really tired all the time. And now I'm to the point where I need to get out. I'm going to do something. And I said to myself, you know what? I could be going through a level of depression. Like, why am I tired? Why this is this happening? You got to think about this because this is making me in tune with my emotions because I'm so used to working and doing. I never really, really take a step back and don't do anything. And I wonder, has that played a huge part in my genetic makeup or not just myself, my makeup, because that's what I learned, right? It's what I understood. And now I feel a level of, I guess, depression. I mean, I do some real research, get my facts straight, but I felt myself being tired just all the time. I don't know if it's because I'm just always doing or because my value for money is so, so huge or is still huge, right? Because it's part of me. That because nothing's coming in, I don't feel valued as myself. The more money I was coming in, the more value I would have for myself. And, you know, just think about right now, talking on this mic, is Jay Shetty said the best, judgment is only an illusion. And that's what's been going on with me is that I've been thinking to myself, last 24 hours, can I be facing a level of depression uh, of some kind? Um, it's just because my value for money is not coming in and... Like I like it to come in, right? We wish we start a new business and right then and there you hit the switch and money's coming in, you know, just hand over fist as old school saying goes, it's coming in nonstop. But when you build, it takes a it takes a project, it takes a time to build a building, right? Just like it does with your yourself. So that's what's been going in my mind and trying to understand a lot better. And um, this is why I'm taking these yesterday and today to really just work on me and work on what I want to do and get the energy up. Because remember. 2021 is coming and I got to focus on, we got to focus on guys, our, our virtual summit coming up soon. And we just got to get this thing going. What, what do you think? What's going on with your life? Well, first of all, congratulations on that awareness. I mean, able to um, 
recognize that. I think um, you've always been like what you mentioned, always on the go, always doing, doing, doing. And now that you actually have that, you know, some time for yourself and just being able to just not have to, let's say, I don't know, all, you know, every hour you're doing something, every hour you're going to go meet a client, you know, you like barely have time for yourself. Now that you have all that, and I think that all that was coming up to you and that, you know, something's happening. It, it's just, I think that's just what it is, is it's just now you're coming into your awareness right now because you have more time for yourself. And who knows, it might have been something that's always been there, right? It just never came out because you've always kept yourself busy and your mind busy. So you never really had a lot of time to really take a step back or relax and just, you know, do so and just have that time for yourself. You know what? I think you have hit the nail right on the head. Yes. I'm so many years used to doing that now I have time to think and sit back. It's like, what do I do with my time? What do I need to be doing something? And, you know, for all of us out there that are stuck in something like this, can be with work or can be with anything, you got to stop. You got to see what it means to you. And I think Jay said stop, swipe, switch, or whatever it may be, but stop. Mm-hmm. And I really think what it means. And that's what I had to do. I was just literally, I just read the book, I was drinking my cup of coffee, and that came to mind. Because now I'm going through a new change. A new consciousness has awakened and a new awareness has been fortified. You know, it's like, it's like a sprout and, and a seed is sprouting because I was unaware of this. Before it's like, oh, I'm working so hard, working so hard. I get tired, I need a break. I go on vacation, right? Mm-hmm. Now it's like, wait a minute, what does it really mean? And your mind's going through a whole process. So neuro, um plasticity, I think I said it right, is opening up just like meditation does. It opens up that new mindset. Like, mm-hmm. Wow. This is really happening. Mm-hmm. Cool. And 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 it's really, really great. I can share with you guys and not be scared. Yeah. Or not knowing, right? Yeah. So what was happening is that it, it might have been there, but you might have been running away from it by telling oh, yourself, yes, yeah, by telling yourself, well, I need a vacation. I need to get out of here. And, you know, quite honestly, that's what's happening with a lot of people now with with um, the pandemic and the shutdown again. Um, you know, this past several months, I've lost track how many months already, but um, people are just trying to run away from it. And my thing is, you run away when you come back, it's still going to be there. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not unless you really, really dig in. And figure it out because what's happening is you're letting that control you. You're letting the situation control you. And so maybe that's what was happening with you before. And now you really have this time to really, um, you know, think and just figure a lot of things out for yourself. And going back to what you were saying about the Jay Shetty part was um, it's called spot, stop and swap. And I really, really, <laughs> <laughs> that's what it is. And I like, I, like <laughs> I know I do too. And I, I honestly like using that too sometimes for myself because it really helps. It really does help a lot. When I first read that part, that's when I just, I, I swear to God, I remember that week I kept using it, you know, because the spot is, and I think I talked about this in one of our podcasts before, is that when um, you spot the feeling or you spot the issue, right? When you spot that, then you stop. You take a moment to understand it, understand what it is and where it's coming from. And then you swap it. You swap it in a new way of, of processing, new way of thinking. And thank you for IPEC because we have all this great awareness of this stuff that we wouldn't do this before. Before I feel a certain way, I got to go on vacation. I feel a certain way, I got to do this. I got to, I got to buy something new. I I got to, I got to, I got to. And now we're able to say, hold on, wait a minute, pump the brakes. Let's stop. Let's see what's going on. And, and let's let's do something about it, right? I mean, that's the whole, whole idea is let's do something about it and make a big, big difference for ourselves. That's that's the whole idea. And that's the amazing part about this whole um, change and, and just with everything, um, you know, 
COVID has done a lot of great things for a lot of people out there and this pandemic and shelter in place, whatever the heck's going on. But also at the same time, a lot of great things has also happened too. Mm-hmm. So, you know, just like no difference than there's a day and there's a night, right? They, they do exist at the same time. Let's, let's face reality. COVID pandemic, shelter in place. This also scarce, scares, let's say scared mindset, scarcity does exist. But also joy does exist, and they both exist at the same time. We're not understanding that, yes, oh, man, I'm scared, I'm scared, but there's some joy there. And it's happening all at the same time. Yep, exactly. And, you know, and like you, I think yesterday's Thanksgiving was, it was, for me, it was nice. It was nice not to do anything. I really just took the time for myself. Um, I, gosh, I didn't do anything. I wanted to stay in bed all day, to tell you the truth. (laughs) I I watched um, some movies, some old movies, and then I was just kind of chatting it up with a couple of my girlfriends um, and just kind of going back and forth, you know, and it wasn't anything negative. And even when talking with them wasn't anything negative because I think, you know, a lot of us just wanted to focus on on gratitude, you know, um, in spite of what, what, what's been happening in the world and what's happening here. Um, and I was, I, I took, I woke up that, I woke up yesterday morning, Thanksgiving, and I was telling myself, man, there's so much things to be grateful for, you know, so much. And I know like in the last several months, I have grown because I remember the beginning at one point I felt defeated, right? And then all throughout this, um, the yeah, for the rest of the, the year now, I've realized that not only have I grown, um, there's things that I, I have to be really thankful for. Had this not had happened, I wouldn't have, I, I don't know what I where I would be with life coaching right now, you know, like, because with work too, so being able to focus on that and, um, you know, like our podcasts, right, what we're doing right now, that and and just being able to work closely with other people, like in our mastermind um, group too. I think, I don't know, I, I, I didn't want to think that maybe that wouldn't have had happened. It probably would have still, but it wouldn't be like how it is right now, how it's glo- how it's going our virtual seminars and the summit that we have coming up, you know, and all that, I'm thinking, man, if we didn't have all this time to focus on this, would we have been doing this? And I think for me, this, this is great. It's like a great opportunity. It's a wonderful feeling to, I I look forward to it. And then, you know, another thing grateful for was yesterday. I was thinking, and my oldest son just turned 14. (laughs) <laughs> oh, happy birthday. Look at that. <laughs> On Thanksgiving Day. And I was looking at him, gosh, such a teenager. And it's it's interesting because then in my I, I told this to myself. I said, one of the greatest blessings I've received from God and I'm grateful for. And here he is 14 years old <laughs> on Thanksgiving Day. You know, so that and just like taking some time for yourselves. And I understand like a lot of people had really been talking about like what you said on social media. I stayed away from social media yesterday um, because I know, I don't know, I just wanted to, I just really wanted to be away from a lot of the stuff. I What I had in mind was just be in front of the TV and watch TV because I, I rarely just really sit down now um, and just have that time. I just wanted to be there all day in front of there. We did visit, um, we visited my stepdad. And that was another thing that, you know, well, I was watching my mom talk to him. I was looking and I said, you know, gosh, if this pandemic kind of just really has made a lot of like effect on a lot of people, right? So I was thinking not only for my stepdad, but the other um veterans that's inside that facility Mm -hmm. they can't see their family and then i said some of them you're able to take them out of the facility take them home for the holidays and then bring them back right and those were the things that we've talked about i said we can't even do that and then but 
I looked at it this way. Okay, but you know what? We still still grateful for the fact that we're still able to see him behind those glass windows and talk to him. Although like my mom can't go in there and touch him and hug him, you know, but we were still able to see him. So that's another thing that we, I was telling my mom, you know, let's just be grateful for that. Because things could have been worse. Yeah. It still could have been worse where we, what if we just can't even see him at all? You know what I mean? On a, and, and, and then one, another great thing is the nurse that was with him, she, um, did something really wonderful. And my mom was like surprised too. So she kept pointing through outside the window. I don't know what she was talking about. So she, my, my stepdad's in a wheelchair and then she wheeled him by the front door of the lobby. Mm-hmm. And there, you know, he's able to, she wanted, I guess she wanted to have him see the family or us and my mom, like some that kind of connection you know, outside of that, outside of that, and it's still kind of like be in person, but yet not touch each other six feet apart, you know, like that. So she did that for us and she did that for him. Look at that. Yeah. So that it's not I'm, behind the the windows. Right. So I think it was, you know, and he was just like, oh, I want to go home. I was like, no, it's OK. I said, you know what? You're safer there. Um, it's so, you know, you're well taken care of. So it, it's OK. You know, listening to you talk about your stepdad before, is is he at the best best place you can be right now with everything? Yes, he is. And I I think about this and you know, I, I know my mom was, you know, feeling something yesterday and she was getting teary eyed and she was holding it in, and so was my stepdad. And I think that I had to tell her this, and this is like to me where I really felt about being grateful. Um yesterday is that I told her if he was at home right now, look at all the crazy things that are happening. We would have to worry about him, right? We would have to be careful with him. And I said, and even with you, because my mom still works. I said, you know, and, and with him being there, he's safe. He's away from all these crazy things. He's around people just like him that understands him. Um, And I think all the employees at the veterans, um, because I I feel sometimes they go above and beyond and they really, really take care of their veterans and they know how to take care of them. And sometimes I feel like they treat them like kids, but you know what? Maybe sometimes that's how they need to be treated. And he, he looks, he looks good. And even my mom said, look at him. He looks so much better. Like he, and I said, yeah, because he's not going through stress outside of that, you know, but I mean, I I get, and I understand that, you know, it's really been hard because being there, he's not able to like, just my mom just hasn't been able to like just give him a hug and touch like how she really been, you know, she's been wanting to and just talking to him in person next to him. It's different. I I get that. And I understand that, but it's been months since, you know, the pandemic and we went from just talking to him over the phone and then me send, um, sending a, an iPad so we could FaceTime him to now at least seeing him through the window, the glass window. It was hard so in the beginning. Better, right? Yeah, it is. My mom said, this <laughs> is like being in jail. I said, no, it, I, I get that. I understand, but it's still better. And, you know, but it's going to be a while to, till, you know, they let people in and, you know, it's just for their you know own what? safety. Yeah, I was going to say that. And it, it, I heard somebody study that before and it, it's, he's with his army buddies, right? So he's, he's rolling around in that wheelchair, whatever it is, with his army buddies hanging out, right? And he couldn't do that at home. So no. think about his joy. Yes, yes. And that, and then, you know, they have, they make him feel right at home. You know, they have activities for them. Every day there's different kind of activities. So, See, and he's, yeah. Man, doesn't it, even though you can't have that touch and feel, if you think about his happiness, mm-hmm. how does it make you feel? 
I felt good. And I have to keep, you know, and that was one that I had reminded my mom yesterday. Like I could tell that she was sad, but I reminded her that she, she looked at me. She said, you know what? You're right. I said, yeah, it, it's look at him. And I said, and you even said it yourself, you know, like he looks happier and he really does because sadly, sometimes, you know, we, we get so busy with life. We get so caught up with life that, you know, he could be home alone by himself watching TV, nobody to talk to because everyone's out and about, you know, at school, working. And in his case and in his situation, I really feel that he needs to be around people who had gone through everything that he's gone through in life and, you know, at the Vietnam War and and being a veteran and they understand each other. Yes. They call that the shared belief system. We're around people that resonate with you and they can share their old war stories or, or things they're doing. Because, you know, as you get older, you know, unfortunately, you know, your friends pass away or our family members pass away and, and left by yourself. But allowing him to reconnect with his buddies that he hasn't seen for a very long time. I'm not for sure. I'm just, you know, throwing that out there. He must feel amazing. They can reconnect with his buddy, tell some old war stories or, you know, just talk some crap. You know, I, I don't know what he does, but that's awesome that he's able to do all that right now with, and being safe. Right. Because yeah. he, if he's in a certain age and, you know, being in hospital or, you know, getting older, your mom goes to work. She can bring home something. He can get sick. And now he's able to explore the hospital, explore his buddies, you know, talk with, talk with people, you know, that he hasn't seen in years and. Oh, that's wonderful. It is. And you know what? And it's not just him. It's all the other vets that are there. And I wish, you know, if I'm thinking to myself that I am I hope that all the other families who has somebody there feels the same way, because I know a lot of them would would like to take them out of there for the holiday, you know, or visit them or go inside and and bring them some treats, you know, like that. And unfortunately, right now, we can't do that. But I hope and that, you know, the rest of the other family members of other people that are in that facility feels the same way that, you know what, they're taking care of them there. They're safer there. And at least we have, you know, what, you know, they're doing whatever they can so that we can at least see them somehow. Yeah, that plexiglass kind of mm-hmm. shelter thing, whatever they have. You yeah. Can see so, I mean, that's, that, they're doing the best thing they can under circumstances mm-hmm. until, I guess, a vaccine becomes available or, you know, it, of course, pandemic's not going away. Sorry. COVID's not going away. It's just how we deal with it will be, obviously, the only resolution. Yeah. And the solution is how we deal with something. So, um, you know, hopefully the vaccine comes and you guys can see and touch him because that's what probably what your mom is missing is that. You know, we're all human beings and, you know, we, we require that touch. You know, we require the the feeling like gyms in Bellingham now have closed again. And just I can think a lot of places, especially California, closed again. I'm like, damn it, not again. I mean, it. and I realized, too, not going to the gym is not just to work out. Going to the gym is my social event. That's why I spend two hours a day, whatever it is, mm-hmm. to work out and get my personal benefit, right? So it's my own physical and mental health. Mm-hmm. that you know they're not looking at there's a gym shut down you know that's it but it's okay so the, the thing about putting gyms outside in bellingham it's about between 35 and 45 degrees daily and who wants to work out outside it's gonna be covered but that wind gets blowing and all that rain and i forget about it but i know now as part of my my makeup and human beings we require that touch mm-hmm. i go back to what my dad said when i was a kid you know son the less people you have the less problems because people cause you problems if you take that concept as a kid, which was to me off the wall, but I spent a lot of my years, because even though it didn't make sense, I spent a lot of years being uh, introverted. And um, it's not that people cause you problems. It's that you have a choice who you let in your life that cause you problems. See, my dad let a lot of people in his life that caused him a lot of problems. He didn't know how to say no. So while at my age now, if they don't, if, if we don't resonate at the same level and it's all negativity, Sorry, it, it it doesn't work for my life. Not personal. It just doesn't work well where I'm going. And you know, so going to the gym was great because I connected with a lot of people. You know, I got to talk to them, got their name, and and, and stuff like that. And it was it was really wonderful. So now, gym is shut down. 
I miss that kind of just talking, just going to people, hey, man, how you doing? How's everything? You know, that's it. Mm-hmm. I don't need to have an hour long conversation, but connecting with people is, is always the best thing. It is. And and some people really, really need that. I um I know of some who I know of someone who actually, you know, when the gym opened up was very, very happy. Gym closed down again and just like furious. Like she was furious, right? And mentioning this to others, then the other person says, Well, work out at home. You can still work out, you know, work out at home. There you go. But I had to jump into that because I felt like I understand the other person. I understand both. But I had to let the other a person know that, you know what, the reason why the gym is very important for her, although, yes, she can work out at home, but she needs that kind of human connection. You know, some people do. And then this is where now it comes down to some people doesn't understand that. Okay. Um, there are people out there that they need some kind of human connection. I, I get it. They can work out at home. They can go take a walk outside or they can go um, find a, a place to go hiking at or just work out at a park. But going to the gym is like therapeutic for others. And if especially, most especially those who may be going through something right now and that had become their outlet. Um, not just because of the, you know, the equipment, there's better equipment than what you would have at home, right? And what you can only get at home. You can only buy so much and get so much um, and fill your home with, you know, all this weights. But yes, the gym has a lot more, but it's just sometimes seeing people. And, you know, even if like I know this girl, this person, even if she doesn't talk to anybody there, it's just seeing them and just being there with those people and working out, doing the same thing that she does to her. That's like it's a connection and that's her outlet. It's therapeutic for her, you know, spending an hour to two hours at the gym. So it closed mm-hmm. down again. So she felt like uh, she felt defeated again, you know. But, yeah, I had to jump into that conversation because the other didn't quite understand you know, like there is ways you could figure out a way, even if the gym is closed. No, no, no. It's not just the workout stuff. It's more of that, that feeling of like being there and connecting to people that does the same thing like you or that, you know, finds working out as therapeutic. Yeah. And, and, and that, at that point with your friend, she was venting because she was feeling a certain way. And the worst thing you do is offer someone a solution. Oh, but you can work out at home. No, you understand what I'm feeling. The re context of that should be, wow, it must be suck that you can't connect with people. Or why do you think you can't cannot work at home? You know, isn't isn't Jim's club the better thing to be closed? So you get more learning out that process. See, people always want to give you a solution to a problem when you're not looking for a solution to a problem. You're just looking for someone to talk to you. But they think by giving you a solution, they're benefiting and helping you. By by think they help themselves. Like, I got a solution for that. I know what to do. Yeah, maybe for you working at home, it's great, it's amazing, but that, that doesn't mean it applies to everybody's same kind of value. That's the reality. It's not the same kind of value. There's a different value there. There's a value going to the gym because I connect with people. I I see people smile. I you know, even if you wear a mask, you see someone smiling, you get to say hi, you get to have different equipment. And some people don't have a big enough house to have any equipment at all. Mm-hmm. Or some people don't have the, the, the financial means to, to buy some dumbbells because dumbbells now are still sold out and it's still overly priced. While the other person that says it probably doesn't work out avidly. They probably don't go to the gym all the time. They probably maybe go to the gym once every six months and what they do is do group classes. You're right about so, that. <laughs> right? So <laughs> their, their value is... Not the same. So the parity will always be um, opposite because the polarity is not the same. The value is not the same. I work out five days a week. For someone to tell me, oh, work out at home, in my situation, I, I benefited. I have all the dumbbells. I have the bench. I have the squat rack. I have the deadlift rack. I have everything I need and a cable machine to, to really work out. The thing that I'm missing in my value is I want to miss cardio. So now I have to run outside. That's that's what's happening. My 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 solution. So I wish it was open, but you know, and I'm like now, now I'm like saying, well, it's not too bad. I don't spend 20 minutes driving there and 20 minutes driving back. That's 40 minutes of savings on my time. So 
I hope gyms do open back up, but I'm not going outside and working out. So gym did open back up today, but going outside, Mm-mm. I don't want to go outside and work out in the rain, especially no. when it's super windy out here. I don't think anyone would want to work out outside either. I mean, but you know what? Sometimes that 15, 20 minutes drive, like for me, I kind of like that because then that's my time for myself driving. It gives me some time to just, we talk about meditation. That That's like my meditation right there. You know, if I'm going to the gym 15, 20 minutes away from home, I, I kind of like that sometimes where it's just peace and quiet in the car and, it, and my mind is just wandering off. Sometimes I'm actually, sometimes I would blink out to honestly, <laughs> I'd miss the exit, you know? Yes. Yeah, so for you, that's got to be there because it's your alone time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And just see. Just like it's, it, you know, there's a lot of things that are therapeutic for everybody. It, it's just different. Everyone's different. And, you know, I think we're at a point where I think we should just stop, not stop, but let's just not judge or let's just not. I get it. Everyone's op- entitled to their opinion, you know, but you also have to understand the other person, where the other person's coming from. I think everybody. I don't think every, no one's entitled to anything around this universe. The, the thought is everybody has an opinion, but not everybody needs to project an opinion. Because the whole point about projecting opinion is saying, I'm right, you're wrong, and here's why. And a projected opinion is only based upon your own level of understanding, your own level of what you truly understand to be right for you and your perspective and your journey and your experience. So everybody's going to have opinion, but they're not entitled to share their opinion. Yeah, you have opinion. But but also it can be flip side too. The person that's sharing their opinion, the person could come with curiosity about their opinion. And that right there diffuses the whole situation make it much better. I guess it depends on how it comes out too, right? So if it comes out to where, oh, you know what? Here's another option. Okay, that's fine. But if it comes out to, well, why don't you do this? So you're kind of already exactly. telling that person. So, yeah, I get that. And, you know, anyway, but other than that, like, just just gratitude. Just practice gratitude. I think I read it somewhere that gratitude is the, the attitude, you know. Um, it just, I think when you have that shift or when you switch it to, you know, just being grateful, it it gives you a different feeling. Like when you start, your, that's, yeah, doesn't it? That's what I'm saying. That where is the, the biggest, the key factor is releasing all the energy that's pent up. So practice more gratitude releases the energy you need to open more space for yourself to project a different version of yourself. Right. So when you start, so let's just say you start your day with gratitude, you'll be open to opportunities. Not, um, not obstacles or not any like complaints. That is certainly true. Yep. So, so with that said, you know what? It's been a great Thanksgiving. I'm happy with everything that's happened in my life so far, and I'm still learning, still growing, still bringing more awareness to myself personally. And, and with that, you know, we have a great virtual summit coming up December 21st to 23rd, virtual summit on self-care. And every day we're going to have a special guest. And the first day we're going to have our great karma with breath work and just talking about how to breathe, how to relax. And, you know, have you ever noticed that when you're in a situation that's anxiety or panic or stress, your breathing rapidly goes fast. Mm-hmm. And when you're in a normal state of, of happiness, your breathing is very slow and rapid. If you understand how to control your breath, you can understand how to control everything around you. So she'll be our first special guest, 21st December. If you guys want to show up, want to listen, want to focus on your self-care and gratitude, go to www.ronbusinesscoaching.com and uh, select virtual seminars or www.ronbusinesscoaching.com. Dot com backslash virtual seminars It'll pop up you can register there i'll send you a custom link so you can join it's great to take this time while 2020 is almost over with 2021 is coming to take care of yourself 
And thank you for listening to another episode of Life's a Shuffle. Mm -hmm. And so just like what Ron said, if you don't know and you're curious what breathwork is about, this is your opportunity to um, to find out um, about how to control your breathing. And then also we um, another topic will be how to embrace the new normal. So this is our new normal. If we you want to call this our new normal, how to embrace it. And then just um, creating goals for 2021. What is it? What's in it for you or how do you want 2021 to be like for you um so come and join us and again thanks um for tuning into another episode of life's shuffle